The 10th of May, 1940, World War II, the Netherlands. Nazi Germany invades Holland, and the German Air Forces, the Luftwaffe, use paratroopers in the capture of tactical points and to assist in the advance of ground troops across the country. The invasion is accompanied by heavy aerial bombardment of Rotterdam and culminates on the 14th of May with the destruction of its entire historic center. Because the Germans threatened to bomb the city of Utrecht in the same way, the Dutch forces surrender one day later. Soon after, the Nazis start to occupy the whole country and pass new anti-Jewish laws which are designed to exclude Jewish people from society and restrict their livelihood. The systematic deportations of Dutch Jews to death camps starts in July 1942. However, because some Dutch citizens cannot bear to see what is happening to their country and people, they join the resistance. Among them are two sisters who will become known for resisting the German occupation and killing the Nazis. Their names are Trus and Freddy Overstecher. Trus Overstecher was born on the 29th of August 1923 in Schoten, the Netherlands. Her younger sister Freddy was born two years later, on the 6th of September 1925, and the sisters lived with their parents on a barge. The sisters grew up in a socially aware household, and their mother, a communist, had a strong intolerance for injustice. When their parents divorced, the girls stayed with their mother and were raised in a small apartment in the city of Harlem. The family lived in poverty and slept on improvised mattresses stuffed with straw. They were taught compassion for those less fortunate than themselves, and the sisters would often share the same bed to spare the other one for the Jewish refugees from Germany that were regularly housed in their small apartment. World War II started on the 1st of September 1939. On the 10th of May 1940, Germany invaded the Netherlands. Soon after, a civil administration was installed under the SS auspices, and Arthur Zeisinkwart was appointed Reich Kommissar of the Netherlands. Among his first steps were a series of laws posing economic discriminations against the Jews. Soon after the occupation, a commander of the Harlem Council of Resistance knocked on the Oversteichen's door and asked their mother if the girls could join the underground fight against the Nazis, and she agreed. At the time, Trus was 16 years old, and Freddy was only 14. In an interview in 2016, Freddy recalled the horrifying moments following the German occupation, saying, I remember how people were taken from their homes. The Germans were banging on doors with the butts of their rifles. That made so much noise, you'd hear it in the entire neighborhood, and they would always yell. It was very frightening. On the 22nd and 23rd of February, 1941, German forces raided the Jewish quarter in Amsterdam, arresting and deporting more than 400 Jewish men to the Buchenwald and Mauthausen concentration camps. The Dutch people's reaction was unique among the Nazi-occupied Europe. They organized the February strike, a two-day general strike, which started on the 25th of February, 1941. German officials brutally suppressed the strike. This action was followed by a hardening of Nazi policy. The German authorities, as well as collaborating Dutch authorities and civil services, segregated Jews from the general Dutch population and incarcerated 15,000 of them in German-administered forced labor camps. The Germans then ordered the concentration of Jews in Amsterdam and sent foreign and stateless Jews to the Vesterborg transit camp in the northeastern part of the country. Some of the remaining provincial Jews were sent to the Furcht camp. The sign, Forbidden for Jews, appeared on the doors and gates of cafes, swimming pools, sports fields, museums, zoos, libraries, theatres, markets, and many other public places. Jews had to hand over their valuables, and their businesses were confiscated. Regulations which forced Jews to wear a yellow Star of David on their clothing as a means of identification were announced in the Netherlands on the 29th of April, 1942. Those caught without the badge after the 5th of May, when they came into effect, were arrested and detained for a six-week period to serve at Mauthausen. In the Netherlands, everyone knew that this was a death sentence. Deportations of Jews from the Netherlands began in July 1942. The last train left Vesterborg for Auschwitz on the 3rd of September, 1944. During these two years, the Germans and their Dutch collaborators deported some 107,000 Jews, mostly to Auschwitz and Sorbibor, where they were murdered. Only 5,200 survived. In addition, 25 to 30,000 Jews went into hiding, assisted by the Dutch underground, and two-thirds of those managed to survive. During the war, the Oversteger family hid a Jewish couple in their home. 
One of the biggest impacts on the Dutch people during the occupation was caused by the German Arbeitseinsatz, or labor deployment, which forced every man aged between 18 and 45 to work in German factories. As part of this program, approximately 500,000 Dutchmen were transported by force to Germany. Life in the factories was hard and dangerous too, as the buildings were regularly bombed by the Allies. Those that refused to go were forced into hiding. Freddy and her sister played a crucial role in distributing anti-Nazi propaganda, spreading leaflets, and pasting warnings to discourage Dutchmen from working in Germany. Their efforts were aimed to disrupt the German war machine and undermine the occupier's control. Their messages read, Don't go to Germany, or for every Dutch man working in Germany, a German man will go to the front. The Oversteger sisters were the only two women in the seven-person underground cell of the Harlem Council of Resistance. Freddy later recalled that at the beginning of her time with the resistance, she thought that they would be starting a kind of secret army. Very soon, however, the girls were doing much more than just handing out and distributing leaflets and literature. They would be shown how to fire a weapon, the basics of sabotage, or picking up tricks on how to rig railways and bridges with dynamite so travel paths could be cut off. This resistance's counterintelligence, domestic sabotage, and communications networks helped to provide key support to Allied forces throughout the liberation of Holland. Members of the resistance, if discovered, were immediately sentenced to death. With her hair in braids, Freddy looked like a 12-year-old schoolgirl, and her innocent looks made her invaluable as she could slip by the Nazi controls unnoticed. Few soldiers took notice of her as she rode a bicycle through occupied territory, secretly acting as a courier, transporting paperwork and weapons for resistance movement. Together with her sister, Freddy would burn down a Nazi warehouse and plant a communist flag at the headquarters of the National Socialist Movement. They would escort small children, homosexuals, and Jewish refugees into hiding spots and arrange false documentation for them, helping them escape concentration camps. However, when it was necessary, the Oversteger sisters would also kill. Freddy was the first to shoot a Nazi, and she did so while riding a bicycle. Tyrus soon began killing Nazis as well, and on one occasion she witnessed a horrifying scene where a Nazi grabbed a baby and hit it against a wall. The father and sister of the baby, both crying hysterically, had to watch as the Nazi was smacking the baby against the wall until the baby was dead. When Tyrus was passing by and saw the horrific scene, she stopped, pointed her gun in the direction of the Nazi, and shot him dead without any regrets. On a different occasion, they were both riding a bicycle, and while Tris was pedaling, Freddy would shoot a Nazi traitor from the back. One notable aspect of Freddy's involvement in the resistance was her work as a seductress. Being young and attractive, she would approach German soldiers and collaborators under the pretext of a romantic encounter. At night, she would put on makeup and would find a target in a bar or restaurant and start flirting with him. Then she would lure the target out, asking him to go for a walk in the woods, and once they were alone, Freddy and her companion would bump into a man along the same path. Unknown to the Nazi officer, the man would be a resistance member who would shoot the Nazi dead and leave him in a hole that had been dug earlier. The Overstechers would target mostly Nazi officers, but also Dutch collaborators who gave the Nazis details of Jewish and dissident families. However, they refused to target the children of high-ranking Nazis. When they were asked by the resistance commanders to kidnap the three children of Reich Commissioner Artur Zeisinquart, they refused and argued, Resistance fighters do not kill children. We only fight against real fascists, not their children. In 1943, the Oversteger sisters were joined by the then 22-year-old former law student named Hanni Schaft, and the three women became inseparable. For the next two years, they would continue to be involved in acts of sabotage, distributing illegal newspapers, and carrying out targeted assassinations of German soldiers and collaborators. As a law student, Honey used her knowledge and skills to aid in the resistance. She would gather intelligence, forge identity papers, and participate in clandestine operations to undermine the Nazi occupiers. She caused so much damage and killed so many Nazis that her capture was considered a high priority, ordered by Adolf Hitler himself. She was known as the Girl with the Red Hair, and her determination and courage made her an iconic figure within the Dutch resistance movement. Both Freddy and her sister Truss survived the war, but unfortunately, Hanni Schaft was captured by the German authorities in 1945, just weeks before the liberation of the Netherlands. 
She was interrogated, tortured, and ultimately executed by firing squad on the 17th of April, 1945. Her sacrifice and bravery made her a symbol of Dutch resistance against Nazi oppression. The Germans officially surrendered all their troops in the Netherlands on the 5th of May, 1945, three days before the general capitulation of Germany. After the war, Supreme Allied Commander Dwight Eisenhower awarded Honey a posthumous Medal of Freedom. In November 1945, Truss married Piet Menger and the couple had four children, the eldest of whom was named in remembrance of Honey's Haft. Truss was a regular guest speaker at universities and secondary schools about wars, anti-Semitism, tolerance, and indifference. On the 10th of May, 1967, Jan Vashem recognized Truss Oversteher as a righteous among the nations, Israel's highest honor for non-Jews who risked their life to save Jews during the Holocaust. In 2014, for their services during World War II, both Truss and Freddy were awarded the Mobilization War Cross by the Dutch Prime Minister. Truss passed away in 2016 at the age of 92, and Freddy passed away two years later at the same age. To this day, their story, as well as others like theirs, serves as a beacon of courage in the face of the unjust and cruel forces in the world. There were many tears shed for Truss and Freddy Oversteger. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.